it's finally time to go for another fishing trip here in Call the Wild Yangler, and what better day than on the release of the newest reserve based in Norway. I can't pronounce it, but we are just going to head straight in. There are 14 fish species, 13 of them are new, and quite a lot of new features are in the game since we've last played, and we'll be checking those out as we go along. Now, it has to be said that the DLC is free up until January 5th. After that, it's going to be $13, which is a pretty expensive price for a map, and we'll have to see if it's going to be worth it. Hopefully it will be, but I would definitely recommend if you have been playing the game and want to check it out, do so before January 5th so you can know whether or not you want to purchase it. Right now, there seems to be some lighting stuff going on over there. Not sure what that is all about. Could be a distance thing with rendering as well. So I want to know. Our equipment does carry over. We don't have to start over on another map. So we'll just go find a spot and cast in. By the way, northern lights on this map. That's a pretty cool fishing environment. There are two, and I guess we'll show this before we cast out. They've added some new things. There's the ability to kind of like quick chat. You can't type your chat, but you can select from a bunch of options. There are also like emotes. I can tell you for sure I do this every time I go fishing, but for real, we're just going to go with the most simplistic thing. Get a spinnerbait, cast out, and see if we get a hit. Now we're going to get some spoilers because I've not looked at what the species were, but on the left there you can see this is new since we've last played. The fish species that are being caught by others in the session actually come up showing you the species and the size, as well as the metal that comes with it. I think that's kind of neat. You can get an idea of if people are having success and where. And also in this case, when we don't know what species are on the map, it'll give us an idea. And I saw that Atlantic salmon. That's something we should probably try to find today. What is that? Is that a walleye? Whatever it is, is quite good size right underneath us. I'm not exactly sure what they'd be attracted to, but we'll quickly bring our spinnerbait down through this way. And if it doesn't get his attention, we'll try some other stuff. Now, I imagine we can look in the handbook, and we probably will, just to maybe get an idea, because best I can tell, they are not paying that any mind. It appears as if it's actually a Xander, which looks similar enough to a walleye, but definitely a little bit different seeing it out of the water. We'll go through all the species at this stage. There are brown trout, that's actually kind of cool. Got the Atlantic salmon, that's something I really want to find. Roach. Northern Pike, which we had on the other map. European Perch, which actually I didn't, I've never seen one before, but I actually like those better than Yellow Perch. We've got, I did, don't know if I'm saying that right, Grayling, Chub, Arctic Char, which I really like those. They were an Alaskan Adventures species from that playthrough we did. I've always wanted to see them kind of in a modern game. Bullhead Catfish, Burbit, Burbo, don't know if I'm saying that right either, Bream, and Asp. Many of these species I have never caught in real life, so bit of an opportunity to do something like that in game. But as for the Xander, apparently bait and lore preferences are minnows, crankbaits, and grubs. I think we have minnows. That's a big fish, and it wants... What just jumped up out there? It wants nothing to do with our minnow as far as I can tell. Maybe it is it. I didn't even realize it was underneath it. They're bigger than I realized. Not too bad. That's an 8.1 pound bronze. That actually startled me. <laughs> when we went to catch, I didn't realize he was going to strike. That's a cool looking fish. And again, if that's a bronze, you would think they probably get upwards of 20, 25 pounds. I want to know what that was out there. By the way, Kyla pointed this out to me. I'd have never been smart enough to figure that out. Map is based in Norway. The cruise line Norwegian. Makes sense there's a cruise ship out there. No idea what that was. It's apparently decent size, but it's interesting that they're not like, th there's no bobber movement and then suddenly it's a hit. It's almost like we're fishing with a lure. Whatever it is, is a deep running fish. Looks to be a Xander again though, which is kind of good to know. Probably bigger than the last, S actually smaller than last, a seven pound bronze. I guess maybe the difference was the distance because it seemed like he put up a better fight. Not a bad sized fish. I wish the lighting effect that's in this screen was also in the like screenshot one. You got a good screenshot of the other, so we'll just go ahead and let that go. I mean, maybe that's all it was. I do see something out there. I don't know if we can reach it, and it just went back underwater, but it was kind of darker in color. 
I think we're close enough that if whatever it is would eat a leech, it should hit this. Maybe it, maybe not. Similar kind of tension to the 7-8 pound Xanders. And you know, at that distance, it could have just simply been that. It gets me every time though, and it does appear to be another Xander as we pull it in. I wonder why there's no movement. It could be the fish species. That's a juvenile at five pounds. They must get really good size. Regardless, we're gonna move to another area because it seems like that's all we're getting here. I'd still love to know if that was another species though. There is, maybe that's a chub there? Now yeah, we might hang here for a second. Ooh, that might get their attention. Looks like a popper's the way to go. He came flying up there. Like, <laughs> insanely fast. That's actually an Atlantic Salmon, though. Is that what we've been seeing this entire time? It is dark. Is this just the best place to catch them? Are we going to be able to get more of them? Not a big one by any stretch, but... I mean, the moment that we started with that popper, he came flying up there. Let's just go with a further cast. The best news is, too, is we got another one straight away. Is it getting light out so we get a better look at whatever it is? That might explain why we weren't getting any bites if we were attempting to fish for the wrong species. They, almost like catfish, though, are staying super deep down. That is indeed another Atlantic Salmon. We're going the wrong direction, though. This time, a three-pounder. Well, what the heck? If they're around here, and they're hitting poppers like that, let's get a boat and see if we can find some bigger ones. I don't necessarily know that this is going to be a good spot, but I don't want to get to the point that the water is so deep that our topwater lore is going to be ineffective, but before we cast, I wanted to show a new feature here. We have a 24-hour clock now on the map, and once we know when day and night are, we'll be able to have a much better idea of when it's going to get dark. But anyway, we will try this again with our popper. They seem to just fly to this, so we'll work with the twitching motion once again. Thought I saw one kind of head over that way still. We'll kind of keep working this. I know this motion is a little bit quick, but there we go. See, that looks to be a chub in the water. And then we get it out and it's an Atlantic salmon. They are fairly similar coloration wise. When they're underwater, you can't see the silver as much. They just look dark. Have not caught even like a remotely big one though. That one looks kind of big. Again, probably not the most, you know, skill requiring thing to catch one at this distance, but if we can get his attention with this, we'll try. There's still some weirdness with the fish physics. They're better, but that, you can see it there when he kind of almost swam backwards. Oh boy. That's something we haven't seen in a while. Got a fish actually taking line, and it, the direction he's going is like a problem. We can't have him going under the boat. That could definitely break our line. We can keep increasing our drag bit by bit. I just don't want to suddenly spike the tension. Finally, I don't know how long this has taken, but an actual fight. Our line, by the way, is 20 pounds. So this fish should be in that area. If not, maybe a little bit more. I think it's actually 22 pound test or somewhere in there. And again, we'll just keep slowly increasing our drag percentage. We're just not getting anywhere. I mean, we can... Try pumping. That's what we gotta be careful of. We do that too much, we can snap the line. There's another big one, like, right out there. So we may try to get him, too. Getting a little somewhere, just gotta be careful with that. We'll wear him out. It definitely... We should be able to get him if we take our time. Just don't want him to get too far or anything. Gotta be right there. We're at 12 feet. We're gonna try pumping here and get him that last little bit. 9.3 was the distance. That's a bronze. <laughs> oh boy. 16.7 pounds is a bronze. We're gonna need some some bigger equipment. We have the uh, the bait caster. So maybe maybe that and similar to the way that we were catching lake trout. I hate to focus in on one fish species the entire time, but now I'm curious. After all that. Biggest one we see is gonna swim right under our boat up top. Maybe they're just more of like a topwater fish. I wouldn't expect that, but then we can hook into one that's actually gonna pull some line. 
And again, this is 55 pound braid, which is more so about the drag. And I think we can, if we want, just kind of drag him right in. But he's putting up some decent tension and even still at like 60%. Kind of brought it to a standstill. Let's just see how big this one is. I, I don't think we have to let it fight much because we should go and catch some other things. This one is at least a silver at 25 pounds. Not too bad. I like that there's going to be at least one. I don't know how big some of these species get. I, I think that catfish species should get big as well, but there should be some really good sized fish to catch on this map, and I do like that. Unfortunately, it's kind of looking like there is still no way to go to a third person view of the vehicle. I was really hoping that might be a thing, but I guess we're going to have to drive like this. We're going to try to go about a mile away up to these little ponds. I'd like to think those will have some different species. So good to see, this is one of my absolute favorite features in the game. When you discover a new body of water, you have a little bit of info in the map. There are, in this area, chub, roach, asp, grayling, and bullhead catfish, which maybe that's not the type of catfish I was thinking it was, because I can't imagine a giant catfish living in here, but we can use the handbook and maybe even just do some experimentation and see if we can pull out of here. Maybe that actually was a thing. It might have been specific to the Xanders, because we're actually getting the bit of bobber action before getting the proper strike. And that would be quite cool if that is a like real-life fish-specific behavior. I wish I had more real-life knowledge and experience of fishing for some of these species so I could know. Because whatever this is, which by the way we use cheese as a bait, maybe a catfish? It was. I do like that this is another specific real-life behavior. Catfish, when hooked, will always try to run to the deepest depths, whereas sometimes you see things like trout and bass come up to the surface and flip out of the water and try to shake the hook loose. That is replicated quite well with a catfish. I always notice they run the deepest in this game. Pretty cool, and the cheese was specifically targeted at trying to catch a catfish. So, that, I didn't even pay attention. Was it a silver? I should have looked more. Maybe we can catch another one, but I'm thinking they're not going to be nearly the size as the like, big Atlantic Salmon. I could only defer to you guys on this. Anybody out there that has maybe fished for Xander before, specifically using some type of live bait. Is that a thing? Do they just not really, like, slowly take the bait? Do they just kind of swim by and hit it? Because that's the way that it's seeming. This, I think, is a chub, finally. It is indeed. A bronze at 1.69. Thought we were going to catch one much earlier. I guess the difference is the dorsal fin's not as, like, red. I thought it was looking at the handbook, but perhaps that's not the case. Not doing too bad, though we're getting through some of these species. So one last spot here. In fact, a fast travel location. I don't know why. I guess it's a trailhead. I kind of wish that there was a boat launch here, because the, the little pond here is kind of big enough that it could be used. Regardless... It does tell us in this area there are roach and asp, both species we've not caught. And I think this time we'll rely on the handbook to determine how to. That got me by surprise. I think this is going to be a roach, just based on the type of bait we're using. So again, though, there was no bobber action at all, and then suddenly just a huge hit. I don't think it's incredibly large, but tension makes it look decent. Still have not actually seen the fish. That looks more like an asp to me. A pretty good one. Well, bronze apparently, but decent size at five pounds. Interesting. So everything listed for these were lures of some kind. And yet, one of the specific baits listed for roach catches us an asp. Interesting. So again, is that a fish specific behavior or is it just almost random as to whether or not there's any bobber action or not, because it was every time there. Other than when we were catching the Xanders, and then it kind of returns here. I just cannot even put into words how startling that is. I don't know if it's because when using a lure, because oftentimes you can't see the fish hit, but you're I guess you're maybe still doing something. Just sitting still and then waiting. And no bobber action. It shocks me every time. Man, that looks bigger than a five pound fish. But it's a five pound fish. They come out of there looking massive. I'd love to know how big they get. I would 
think this little pond is actually big enough to support bigger ones. I just don't know. And, like, what do we do for the roach? Because if we look in the handbook, and just looking at this fish, it, it doesn't exactly scream aggressive. It definitely looks like something that would hit, like, a, a worm or, you know, bait like that. But every time we use it, we're catching the aspen instead. We'll try one more time, maybe with the pearl barley. And just try to catch one, because they look cool. I'd love to see what the models look like in our hands here. Maybe this will be at this time. Still just startling as ever. The strike indication sound might actually be doing it. But this is one thing still. I don't feel as though there's any real relevance to what direction I hold the rod in. It just kind of doesn't matter. And maybe it's because I am using... Equipment that's probably too big for some of this stuff. Set an asp again. <laughs> Why does this keep happening? They're all like roughly the same size too. So I guess we'll have to try something different. And maybe that'll have to be for next time. So I do have to say there's a lot of new stuff that definitely is encouraging. I don't really know what I think of the emotes. I have to put this away to be able to do them. There are a number of them. And I guess, you know, to make a multiplayer game more interesting, things like that probably help. <laughs> but, uh, I still don't know about, you know, some of the mechanics. I do think the fish interactions are better. I think the lore interactions are better. But you still see some kind of goofiness with things like the fish rolling around, flipping around while, while hooked. Some of that's realistic, but not nearly to the extent that it kind of happens in the game. And, frankly, I think my biggest concern is actually the price of the DLC, but I don't know, maybe 13 new fish species, a map of this size, maybe it's worth that price, and only time will tell. And uh, I'd love to know what you guys think, whether you've played the map, whether you've tried it out, or are just watching and seeing this for the first time. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As for the rest of the fish species that we have yet to find on this map, we'll be back again sometime hopefully in the next week or maybe two weeks to try it out. And hopefully you get the rest of those, whether it's on stream or in a video. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.